Hello, my friends. I am having a lot of emotions. I don't know how the rest of you all do it, but I literally finished this book about 15 minutes ago, and I just... Uh, words. Words. Book in question is called The Games by Ted Kostmatka. Kostmatka? Ted, if you want to ever let me know how to say your name, I would be really happy. This is not the original cover. This was actually lent to me by my friend Roxy, and it is the advanced uncorrected proof. So this is the previous to publication stage. It is in fact uncorrected. I found a couple spelling errors, grammatical errors. It was really funny and I was really kind of put off by it, but it was cool. But uh, it's got this cool little inlay on the front which talks all about it. This is the actual cover. Again here and writes in when it gets released. Amazing! Leslie's actually reading a book that is somewhat current. The tentative on-sale date for this was March 13th, 2012, so this came out just a couple months ago. Wow! Upon starting the prologue to this book, it really felt like a cross between Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game and, of course, Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games. It just... and it's called The Games. How many times can we say games? It felt like those combined because it really collided the idea of people being trained for one specific thing in the modern world where everything is sort of altered and then being trained to go out and kill and then the Hunger Games where it's just this all-out fight to the death which is predicated on past events and run by a man who is bloodthirsty and power hungry and just generally not very nice who only wants to see it flourish for himself. While this book proves to be sort of more scientifically sound than the other two, the other two are definitely a little bit more fantastical, it really stands out for itself and as I continued reading I stopped seeing those correlations between the other two books and it really stood out for itself. So good job Ted Kostmatka! In summation this is about a boy named Evan who is proven to be a bit of a genius at a very young age and is taken away from his mother to go be trained to do great scientific things. Uh, the story doesn't focus too too much on him outrightly, but it does focus on another man named Silas Williams and he is the head of US um, biodevelopment and he works at the Helix Labs in San Bernardino, California, and they are working on genetically modifying an organism to fight in the futuristic gladiator competition of the Olympic Games. And in this gladiator competition, a gladiator is presented from each country in the competition, and the two of them in a pyramid pyramidical? Pyramidal? Pyramidal? Pyramidal fashion, they fight to the death and whichever gladiator is still left standing at the end is clearly the champion. Suffice it to say, the issue in this book is that <clears throat> Silas and his lab technicians have been able to take the creation of Evan, who comes back later in the story, and it's Evan's creation that they use for this year's gladiator competition, and they build him and create him and raise him, but no one can quite figure out what it is because it's so scientifically odd. It's a complete anomaly to everyone, and they bring in another biologist named Vidonia, and she can't even figure it out. She's a xenobiologist, and no one, no one knows what this thing is. And as the story develops, you watch it grow and progress and see what it becomes until finally you get all the way up to the Olympic Games where it fights in the gladiator competition. And I won't say any more, because I can't do it without giving you the spoiler a thing. Ha! Ah! Told you, emotions! What I really liked about this book was the emphasis on actual, physical, observable, everyday science that is done in the present time. This is definitely a sci-fi book set in the future of America. It takes place primarily in California, and it's, it's all very 
I don't want to say understandable because there was a lot of scientific jargon, but I appreciated the fact that it was extremely realistic. There were some things that definitely were from the future and I didn't quite understand and were never really explained. And I don't know if that's just because this was the uncorrected proof and maybe that got worked out in the final edition of the book. I'm not sure, but that that I, I liked and also didn't like. This book felt a little slow in the beginning, but as I kept reading and it got faster and faster, I realized that it wasn't slowness. I was just having to wade through all kinds of backstory and build up and character development, which all really came through in the rest of the book, which was beautiful and stunning. And you could totally see why you had spent so much time reading into the background of everyone and everything and how the lab works and how the gladiator was created and there's a whole paragraph of like nucleotide sets from the the DNA of the creature that they create and you wonder why is this in here? I don't really know what this means unless you do know what it means and you're just like all right I can just skip over these next 20 lines of text but it's really it's you need that you need all that scientific slow moving backstory in there to really understand what it's about and it's it's a real it's a compliment to the story most definitely how it's all set up how this book is set up is definitely the best thing about it its flow is excellent and it just quickens the pace as you read and it builds to a beautiful pinnacle of story and then sends you for a ride. It's fantastic. If you read this, if anyone else has read this, I feel like people are gonna say, I want to know more about Evan Chandler, the small boy from the beginning, who doesn't really get a lot of of airtime, so to speak, at all. He gets mentioned very infrequently, and that's sort of misleading at the prologue, which is all about him. And I found myself thinking, I wish I knew more about Evan Chandler, I wish I knew more about Evan Chandler, until I realized I didn't really want to know more about Evan Chandler. There is a connection between him and the rest of the story that doesn't really make sense to me and never really made sense even toward the end, and I wish that I had known a little bit more about that, but I'm perfectly fine with the amount that we learned about him because as instrumental as he seemed at the beginning, he wasn't throughout the book, and I was I was a little confused by that aspect. So I definitely, I would have done that differently, I think. I'm not sure how, but that's definitely something that I would like to change. Overall, this was a really fantastic read. I definitely recommend it if you're into science, if you're into science fiction, if you... This is just a really compelling story. If you don't mind getting through all the science, there's also a lot of very human things in there, and it actually really made me appreciate all the accomplishments of humanity, believe it or not. It's very thought-provoking, very insightful, and very, very well, well written as well. It's not beautifully loquacious, but it's, it's very simply written with a lot of great adjectives and a lot of really great verbs, in case you like that kind of thing. Four out of five stars on Ted Kosmotka's The Games. Uh, if you want to subscribe to us, you can do so with that button up there, or you can friend us on Goodreads. Links are in the thing below. Or the fastest and easiest way to stalk us is on Twitter, which is also in the doobly-doo below. Hope you're all wonderful, and I'll see you later.